You're listening to Myers-Briggs Question Corner with Edith Richards. Our question today is from Chase. I'm an 18-year-old ISFP student about to start university. I'll be living at home for the first semester. I have no problem with that, and I love my family more than I can say. But I'm the only perceiver in a family of judges. The freedom that I've always wanted from their schedules and strictness will not come as easily as I'd like. What is the best way to approach this with my family without creating a turbulent situation? This question really hits home for me personally as I've dealt with the very same issue. I'm the only perceiver in a family of judges, and it's been challenging to say the least. In my answer to your question, Chase, I'll be incorporating strategies that have worked for me. I'm going to start with an overview of the ISFP type, giving special attention to their needs as they take the first steps into their adult lives. I'll then talk about the sources of stress for ISFPs, including the differences in approaching tasks and time management between Myers-Briggs perceiving types and judging types. And I'll conclude with suggestions that you, Chase, can use with your family that will give you the freedom you're craving while keeping your family relationship civil. And just for fun, I have a couple of suggestions as you spread your wings and leave high school for college. In any family where you're the only one of a certain Myers-Briggs preference, you're going to appear to be the black sheep. And this is especially true for an ISFP type, the Myers-Briggs types who perhaps more than any other hear the beat of a different drummer. Chase, it's not surprising to me to hear how much you crave freedom, as this is indicative of every ISFP I've ever encountered. ISFP types tend to be free, yet often end up repressing these desires and, as a result, feel dead inside, but keep these feelings to themselves, often as a means of avoiding conflict. They also may not be the best at expressing their feelings and needs. If their needs go unmet for too long, they may act out in unhealthy ways. Some may become more passive or aloof than usual, apathetic or lazy, and some may become downright manipulative, especially if they believe they've been wronged. Strengths of ISFPs include the ability to create harmony everywhere they go, a general kindness and gentleness not often seen in other types valuing people for who they are, cooperating, being attuned to the sensory world of art, color, music, or fashion, and knowing just the right thing to say or do at just the right time. ISFPs are typically empathetic, sensitive to both other people's emotions and to criticism. They live in the moment and don't naturally plan for the future, and as a result, they can be a bit unpredictable. Common sources of stress for ISFPs include conflict, especially among close friends and family, pressure to make a decision before they're ready, giving too much of themselves in their desire to be of service to others, worry about failing in a relationship, others talking publicly about the ISFP's private matters, and being restricted by rules and being forced to follow strict schedules. For many ISFPs, Freedom of expression is a top priority. They're very resistant to control. They'll be at their best selves when they're given the space and freedom to do things their own way. Let's talk about how P's and J's approach goals and manage time differently. Judging types need to have a sense of control and closure. They place a very high value on time. They don't like last-minute changes or surprises to their schedules and are most comfortable when everything has been decided or completed. Perceiving types need to feel free to enjoy themselves without being micromanaged. Timelines are roadblocks that inhibit their freedom. Decisions to perceiving types are opportunities to explore options and gather information in order to make a more informed, proper decision. Now, to judging types, this may look like procrastination, but let's face it, perceiving types have their advantages. They're spontaneous, 
open to new ideas and information, and natural improvisers who jump in and solve problems at just the right moment. For specific strategies on time management for perceiving types, I invite you to tune into my recent podcast entitled Perceivers and Time Management, available on iTunes, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, and my website, atopcareer.com. Knowing all of the difficulties of a P in a family of J's, here are some suggestions to help produce positive interactions with your J family, Chase. First, recognize that they don't have the same priorities as you do. To you, J's will always be control freaks, and to them, you will always be a slob. Accept this for what it is. Because they're your family, Most likely, they are trying to help you to be more organized, neat, and punctual. Broadening your own perspective can help you on your weaker areas as you move to the next stage of your life. Second, when you're working on a project or planning something out, have that big goal in mind with a deadline of when you want it done, but allow yourself the flexibility of when and how you achieve it. For example, If your mom is bugging you to set your class schedule for the next semester, tell her you'll have it completed by July 15th or whatever date you set, but then be sure that you complete that task by the due date. If you don't, you'll lose all credibility in the eyes of your mom or the judging type. Then they'll micromanage you even more, and that's definitely not a good thing. Third, be mindful of your family's needs. Understand that they place a high value on time, on schedules, on being organized, and they have different needs for control and closure than you do. At the same time, you have to let them know how you operate and what you need in order to be your best self. It is possible for you to accommodate their needs and your own. Say no when it's unrealistic to take on additional tasks. If necessary, speak to them in a direct, logical way. Don't assume they know what you're thinking and feeling. There are two coping mechanisms that other ISFP types have shared with me that help them through difficult times. One is to give yourself plenty of alone time and time for reflection. The second is making the time to interact with other friendly, warm people whom you trust. Incorporating these two suggestions into everything you do will allow you to use your gifts in the immediate, tangible, and supportive way that you were meant to. I want to close with a couple of tips for you, Chase, as you begin your college career. I'm going to try not to lecture too much here, as you're truly entering the time of your life, and you absolutely should have the freedom and fun that you crave. One of the most difficult things young people venturing off to college have is the difference in schedules. At first, it may seem like you have a lot of freedom. You're in class 15 hours a week compared to 30 or 35 that you were in high school. You set your own schedule. You can take at least some of the classes that you want. You're also going to have a lot more reading and a lot of writing. Your grade may only be based on two papers or two big tests. And that's a lot of information to hold in your head. Remember that a full-time college student in the American college system takes 15 credits per semester on average, which means they're in class 15 hours per week. But in order to keep up with everything those classes cover, you'll need to put in twice the amount of study time. And that's at least two hours for every hour you're in class. As a general rule, If you're a full-time college or university student, put in full-time work hours, meaning 40 to 45 hours per week, to your studies, and you'll most likely be successful. Now, parties and socializing are also important parts of college life. So yes, do these things, but not at the expense of your schoolwork. I hate to be the person to say you'll regret it someday, but you will regret it someday. Most good jobs and stable workplaces are going to require a bachelor's degree at minimum. And this is only increasing as time goes on, despite the talk about college degrees being worth the investment. 
So do whatever it takes in your own time and at your own pace to ensure that you meet all the requirements to complete your college degree. To sum it up, ISFPs are friendly, modest, free spirits who, in their present-oriented approach, have a low need for control and may neglect to plan for the future and organize their time. This can cause tension in a family of Myers-Briggs judges. Acknowledging that different people have different gifts is the first step toward building a more fulfilling and productive relationship. The Myers-Briggs can help in understanding certain behavioral tendencies, but it's up to you what you do with that information. Chase, thank you so much for writing in with your question. Thanks for listening to this episode. If you'd like to hear more, or you'd like to submit a question yourself, then you can find us at www.atopcareer.com. Until next time. MBTI and Myers-Briggs are registered trademarks of the MBTI Trust.